The dude that we signed the contract with was a complete sleaze bag, dude. He was, oh man, it, we ended up finding out that he was into fencing stolen gear and, you know, sniffing up the profits and just crazy shit. We just totally jumped to it, you know? and didn't really read over anything. We'd like, let's just put it out. It's just, just gonna be cool. Just, you know, I never thought it'd even go any further than that, you know, and, and he ended up screwing us over. We, um, I don't wanna say that, but we didn't have good dealings with them. In high school or right, after, right out of high school when I was, you know, doing that, you know, signing something that had to do with music, that was, had to do with uh, money or you know responsibility yes yes it was it was on a small enough level that i knew the reality it just made me think wow we're going to start working you know like we're we're at a little, another level now where we have to keep doing what we're doing and do more you have to work just as hard um i was excited really because it was you know i was 20 and it was like it's kind of like a dream and plus it, it happening so quick for us like that was kind of cool and just wow, and it just happened, and I was excited. Yeah, we were all excited um, to do that. I had a hard time enjoying that whole like signing process and everything. I mean, whatever chemical state of mind I was in, but it just, it just felt like something really personal to me was becoming impersonal. I don't know. I had a really hard time with that relationship. I remember sitting on the Warner Brothers lot, like we were having lunch on like the Warner Brothers movie lot with like the big wigs from the record company. And, you know, I wish that I had been in a place where I could enjoy just the sheer silliness of it, like ordering a meal that would have paid my rent, you know, for the month. And at that point, I was pretty desperate for rent money. And I just couldn't see the humor in it. It just felt like, um, it just felt like a loss of control to like see these people that I couldn't relate to that I really believe didn't give a crap about my music, you know, signing something over to them. I know that sounds a little dramatic. And y'all look at them motherfuckers, what? <laughs> you know, I ain't signing, what? You know, well, if you don't blah, 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 blah what? I've made it a point not to. Uh, and I, I think in the day when you're young, you call that integrity. <laughs> but, you know, now, show me what the sign, man. You know, how much do you want? <laughs> you know, how much am I getting? So all of a sudden, you just don't care. But no, because I, I, I during the day, I, I, I wanted to keep some kind of integrity. So I never really signed anything on the dotted line. No, I just let Craig Barker to handle that stuff, you know. <laughs> He's my lawyer and... And uh, before him, Ray Benson look, <clears throat> looked over a contract with, that I'd signed, and, and I didn't pay much attention to that contract. I, I just tried to abide by it. It was a feeling when I first did it that, okay, this is it. This is where it all begins. This is, the, this is where the, the, the story begins to unfold, you know. And, it, and the story does begin to unfold, but it's the... This, the shady, unfortunate part of the story that begins to unfold. And it is your first lesson in trust and uh, common sense and uh, in the real music business. <laughs>
the 50s rock and roll and the rockabilly stuff more than I do the heavy metal and some other things, you know. A lot of it's about freedom and doing your own thing, really, because that's one thing I've noticed playing music. I've had a few day jobs here and there, but I've, most part, been free to create, do what I want to do, and I think that rock and roll is all about freedom. A way of life, you know, born a rock or die a rocker, you know. I think it's, it's something that moves you in a way that, that nothing else can. Rock and roll is not heavy metal. And, and rock and roll is not uh, one style of music. I mean, rap is rock and roll. You know, everything is rock and roll. Rock and roll is a term that we made to define something that's undefinable, so, you know? So I'm not gonna venture to, to define it besides just using the term we created. My definition of rock and roll is anything that is melodic and has a message, any message anything that can make you feel, anything that can evoke emotion, anything that can bring something out of someone. That's rock and roll. Rock and roll is hip hop. Rock and roll is rock and roll. Rock and roll is Western. Rock and roll is classical, it's jazz. Rock and roll is the encompass of music as a whole. You know, whatever evokes feeling and emotion, you know, and, uh, um, you know, music is the most valuable part of our culture, you know, in my opinion. It's a soul, you know. I think you're, you're born a certain way and, you know, it's like uh, everyone needs a crutch, man, you know. You know. Mine just happens to be rock and roll. <laughs> Woo! My love for doing music is getting on the stage and bringing it, you know what I mean? And seeing that crowd, seeing those eyes light up, seeing those, that, that immediate response, that's what I love. The, the feedback from people. Uh, yes, I love that. I love being able to, to excuse me, to jam and uh, hear woo! You know, and I love being heckled, and I love just, ah, come on. I mean, that's what I do. I'll get in your face. I expect you to do that to me. For me, playing live is the most fun. I like, you know, I like playing my own songs. I like playing cover songs. I just like playing live the best. Just having the audience get what you're about, and it does, again, it doesn't matter if you're in a small club with a pack 500 people or you're doing an outdoor show with a couple thousand people. It's just getting, having them get and know what you're about and moving them. The whole thing about music is moving people. I am a drummer, so I, it's my job to move people, to get people to go, hmm. Huh. Because that's kind of what the fundamental beat does. If you're not doing that, then something, you ain't clicking. Playing live is where it's most, of, most fun. You can't sell records unless you're out there meeting the people. It's what it's for, you know, I mean, to uh it's really sad when you go out and uh buy a record of a band you know that's broken up it's a reissue or something like that and or you know it's like you never be able to see this band play but it's it's awesome and just just imagine the intensity if you could you know it's like live performances are yeah. the best yeah i mean to play live to a large crowd there's nothing like that whatever we got to do to stay on the road let's do it because that's where you are touching fans and changing their lives. If they think that that's the shit and that record that came out that summer that they love is your record, man, stay out there and make that, make that summer last forever, endless summer. Make it go on and on and on because that's what it's about, I think. I think you stay on the road for as long as you can. Uh, drugs only slowed it down. Wow, what a fucking commercial that is, huh? Yeah. Yeah, but drugs only slowed it down. I actually had a bad experience with it, you know. Uh, we had this big 4th of July party, me and my friends. We got this hotel room. This kid was visiting from L.A. He had bought some, 
stuff from out there and it was laced with something and I had a bad head experience. <laughs> I don't know what it had in it. I know you seen Friday when he was in the tricky coop. <laughs> Yeah. I, I was in the tub, you know, like, <laughs> you know, tripping out. And I was just like, you know what? That's when I, that was my last experience with drugs because, you know, I figured, you know, you don't ever know what you're messing with. Never been a habit. Any drug has never been a habit. Uh, smoking cigarettes. Never. Never was a habit. Early on, when I was just young, uh, I heard, uh, I watched guys in their 40s where they get to where they couldn't sing anymore because they stressed out on booze and tobacco, and it'll get your voice. I couldn't be singing near as well as I do now at my age if I had drank and smoked. Yeah. And I've never done it. I just, but not because I put anybody else down for doing it. That's their business, but I found that that it's detrimental. One is the people that kind of hang around and do that, it's real shady. And I just don't, I, I choose my friends wisely, and I just think that a lot of, there's certain things, even with alcohol, so they, they just, people get belligerent, people get, bel and I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like when people are all, you know, man, man, want to do a line, and I just look at that. I, okay, to sum it up is I didn't necessarily have to do drugs to, to find out what drugs are cool and what drugs aren't cool. I've smoked weed and, and done acid and shrooms and blah, 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 and drank lots, but I've never mixed psychedelics with my instrument. Hmm. I've, and for some reason, I've never wanted to. Drugs have played a huge role in my life. I mean, I don't know like how into this group you want to go, but I've like, I've been real lucky to, I've been like an after school special, <laughs> like, you know, the springboard like all the way through to having a really debilitating drug problem. And I think when I, I mean, I, I had to go to rehab and when I was cleaning out and trying to figure out what I wanted to do, I think it was at that point that it was more clear than ever that what I wanted to do was play music. And that for me, doing drugs had absolutely nothing to do with playing music. It had everything to do with like, I think the, the last year that I used drugs, I wrote one song. And it, for me, it was just cut and dry. I mean, I'm, you know, if, if I could still do them, I would, but I just can't. They just, it was just a bad mix. You know, me and drugs just don't get along. And just for me, it was just like, it helped bring me to a point where it was like, what do you want? And I was like, I want to be a rock star, <laughs> you know? And it's like, it's not going to happen if I, you know, it was, I was trying, maybe I was trying to live like some cliche.